up all night Nothing's wrong, nothing's right I swear these walls are upside down I swear the roof is on the ground Demons don't sleep at night oh, oh, oh. I try to turn off my mind But it's alright You're like heaven when I'm in hell You would dare a heavy heart Tasty light, but fed the dark I'm waiting for them all to see I don't deserve your company To love myself is way too hard is getting rid of fees when you order McDonald's, Panda Express, and Panera. So now you can get McDonald's without the side of fees. And Panda Express without the fees. And Panera without the fee. You get the point. Only on? B-Dub's win-win value lineup gives you more with buy one, get one free Wing Tuesdays and boneless Thursdays. Wing bundles starting at $9.99 and $3 Tall House beers. It's like finding a heads-up penny under a bag of diamonds. Buffalo Wild Wings get takeout or delivery. Got your food. Wow, tough year, huh? Yeah, but not anymore. I mean, Grubhub's here, and so am I, so uh, ready to DJ. Come on in. Thanks. How's it going? I'm Dylan Francis. Welcome to Grubhub Soundbites Livestream. It's gonna be a beautiful night. We're gonna be vibing. Got my nice couple that I delivered food to earlier. Say hi to them. Hi. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. And if you haven't already, Make sure you order some food from Grubhub and eat with us.
my beautiful couple doing? You guys are doing good? Amazing.
How you guys doing? You good? I just wanted to ask you a quick question. What's your favorite thing about music and food? You don't have to answer it, I know. Because they go together so well. I'll be back later. digestion song right here. 
is like sheer vibes, perpetual vibes right here. So help your stomach. I got you. Don't worry. You don't have to worry about anything. Just keep enjoying the night. And you too. And you too. soon, don't worry. We can all dance. Six feet away from each other, though.
you with that punk or grub up? Grub up. Grub up. Not this. Make sure you order grub up.
Get up and dance if you want right here. I mean, it's a great song to dance to if you want. I know you're done eating. I'd love to see it. We'd all love to see it. Maybe we're going to dance. Right here. Beautiful, you can sit back down now. That was it. That was the only one I really wanted you guys to dance to. Now you can just relax and just watch me. me here appreciate you for having me on the sound bites i got one more song to play for my 
beautiful friends over here that invited me to deliver them food and have a great time. We had a great time, right? Yeah, we did have a great time. But I, lo I love you, Grubhub, and I love all you watching. They just talk, talk. They just talk. Again, thank you, Grubhub, for having me on the Sound Bites. I just got to give a shout out to Sharon from Buffalo Wild Wings. She picks it up, gives me the ultimate amount of sauce. So, Sharon, you're the best, okay? I love you, wherever you are. I hope you're doing fantastic. You guys stick around. There's a live Q&A with me. I love you. I'll see you at the Q&A. Don't leave. We'll leave this, but go to the Q&A. Okay, bye. See you at the Q&A.
up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Grubhub, for putting this together. Now it's time for the Q&A section, so I'm ready to answer any questions you have about me, my life, uh, the show I just played for the two people. Uh, anything you want to ask. Anything you want to ask. Why is this in my recommend? That's a good question. It's because, uh, you know, food and Dylan Francis bring people together, and so they recommended that to you. That's an easy question. Next one, Dylan, how many times has Gerald been replaced? That's a, that's a good question. I Probably around like 25 times, I would say, sadly. Do I even lift, bro? No, I haven't been to a gym in so long. I forgot what it's like. My road to one ab is completely gone, um, but I'll, I'll restart it once, once I can go back. Ger how is Gerald? Oh yeah, I, need, I, I forgot. I need to say the people's names and questions. My bad. Uh, so Joel O says dream venue to perform at, um, I think Coachella was actually already one of those. So that already did it. Thank you, Coachella. I love you. I think I played it three times. Um, Splam 52 asked how Gerald is and you know, he's, he's, he's vibing in the back somewhere in the car. Uh, you know, um, Candace Mallard says, how did you get, how did you go about learning uh, to produce your own music. That's actually a good story. Um, my friend, Corey enemy, um, I think that's what he still goes by, but he was this incredible producer is this incredible producer. Not was still is, he is an incredible producer. And, um, I had met him in LA and I knew that he worked in Atlanta and I asked him if I could become his assistant and learn how to make music from him. So he's like, if you can fly yourself out to Atlanta, you can live on my um, kitchen floor and I will teach you and you just have to be my assistant. And that's what I did. And I stayed with him for three months or two months or something like that. And then I moved back to LA and uh, paid my parents uh, the rent money and um, to stay in their back house. And I, and I asked them if they would let me live there for a year and see if I could make anything happen. And boom, here I am playing sound bites for Grubhub. And so, you know, anything's possible if you put your mind to it. And I, and I know that a lot of people say that, but that's very true. Put your blinders on too and turn off all your social media stuff and just focus on your craft. Um, Elizabeth J says, favorite place to play a show at? Um, I think I would have to say LA because I'm an LA native. I've born and raised. And then I would also have to say Norway. Um, that was like the one place that I asked my booking agents when I, when I got my booking agents in Europe, um, shout out Belinda law. Um, she's incredible. I've been working with her for like 12 years now. And I asked her to book me a show in Norway and she was like, you got it. And I think I played to like, you know, maybe a hundred people and it was just incredible. Um, and I just kept going back, uh, and I built a, an audience there <laughs> really ground roots uh, stuff. And I just, I didn't, I didn't care how many people I was playing to when I was going there. Cause I just wanted to see it. And it's, it's beautiful, especially in the summertime. All right. Let's see what other questions we have. Um, Aaron Warner says thinking process while making music. Um, my best advice, if, even if you're not asking for advice, I'm just going to say this cause this is my process. So when you're trying to sit down and make a song, it may happen or it may not. Um, but so the best thing to do, if it's, if it's not happening, if you're not able to make a song that day, then the best thing to do is make loops, like 10 second loops of sounds, go into your synths and make stupid noises. Don't focus on making anything but noises or drum loops. That's it. And then come back to it tomorrow and you'll have these little loops that you can maybe splice together and get them in the correct key. And you'll end up making a song from those inspiring little loops that you made yesterday without focusing on what you should make. Uh, Yolanda Liggins says, what's your favorite song? What's my favorite song right now? Um, or, or what's my favorite song? She didn't say right now. So I, I would say my favorite song ever would be Sam Cooke. Um, oh, I'm forgetting the name right now. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue and I don't want to say the wrong name. Um, I keep thinking of the song where it's like, darling, you thrill me. Uh, but that's not it. That's not it. It's, uh, 
a change gonna come. That's what it is. Sam Cooke, a change is gonna come. That's one of my favorite songs. Aiden Game says, how old are you? I am 33 now. I've been making music for, for 15 years now. Holy, holy. Time flies. Time flies when you're, um, when you are touring, even though I haven't been for a bit. Uh, have you tried doing a, uh, oh, sorry. I need to read the names. I got to keep remembering this. Uh, Kristen Rodolfo. Rod Wait, no, I'm saying this wrong. Kristen Rodolfo. No, I'm saying it right. Any pets? No, sadly. Well, my, my parents have a dog. Um, but the, I, I had a cat and I gave them my cat. And sadly, um, I think it was like two years ago on Halloween, he got out and was never seen again. I'm hoping that some other family picked him up and were like, they thought it was a lost cat and he's doing good now. So that's what I'm going to think. Um, David Clark, uh, please don't spam, but I'll answer your question. Have you been to New York city? Wow. Um, yes, I've played there a bunch. Great question. Great question, David Clark. Wow. Thrilling. This is a good one though. JJ De La Tora says boxers or briefs. Um, and I'm going to have to say boxer briefs. I like, I like the briefs and, uh, yeah. Um, 21 Jubilee says, are you an MMA fighter? No, I am not Dylan Dennis or whatever, but everyone always, always tags me in his posts asking me why I'm trying to fight people. And that's not me. That is not me. I am not that guy. <clears throat> um, three KG Twix says, uh, what do you look forward to the most about summer? Um, the shows. Summer is like the best time for playing shows. Um, hopefully uh, by summertime, we're all gonna be back out there at, at uh, our favorite festivals and having the time of our lives. Um, Midia Smelt says, have you met Alan Walker in real life? Yes, I have. I believe it was in uh, Brazil for Lollapalooza. Um, and he's a great dude. Isn't he from Norway? I, if, I'm, if I recall correctly, um, I think he's Norwegian, so shout out to him. And if I'm wrong, I know that he's from somewhere over there. So if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But uh, <laughs> um, Z-W-U-K-Y, I don't know how to say your name. What is your favorite DMB track at the moment? My favorite one is the one that I played at the end of my set, the Coming Over DMB remix. Uh, shameless plug right here. It's going to be coming out April 16th with a bunch of other VIP remixes that I played in my sound bites. Grubhub mix. So there you go. Um, when will uh, Michael Scott? Oh, sh Michael Scott from the office is in here. <laughs> when will they be? When will there be another Mad Decent boat party? Uh, Mad Fam. I don't think that actually will ever happen. Um, I think they're trying to do something where where like everyone goes to Costa Rica or something like that. I don't know. I might be giving you guys too much alpha right here. Um, but yeah, um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I, I, some of these comments are going so fast. Okay. Aaron Van Noy says, what song are you most proud of making? That's a great question. I think my favorite song of mine would have to be not butter. Um, yeah, Not Butter by me, Dylan Francis is my favorite song and my favorite music video I've ever made. So shout out Brandon Dermer. All right, last question. And then I'm going to wrap up and you guys better stay tuned. Okay. So the last question I'm going to do, okay, right here, sir. I, oh, it passed it. Uh, never mind. Sorry, we can't answer your question. Oh, wait, no, I can see it now. Wait, oh, oh, wait, uh, uh, back up. Let's see, where is it? It's, where are you? I think it's a, there it is. Sarita Bassnet says, what food do you hate most? And the reason that's a good question is because I hate tomatoes and it's a good story. And this is the last thing I'll end on. And then we're going to go to Alan Walker. But when I was younger, my dad took me to his friend's house and the guy had a tomato farm in his backyard. And the guy that had the tomato farm said, yo, Dylan, go and eat one of these tomatoes. And I was like, 
I don't like tomatoes. But I didn't say this to him because I was probably 10 or something. And I look at my dad and I'm like, damn, I don't want to disappoint my dad. I got to eat this tomato. So I grab a tomato from one of the things and I eat it and it's all green and red inside. And it was awful. And I remember just chewing it and trying to be happy as possible. Uh, and when he asked me if it was good, I just did the mm, so good. And I didn't disappoint my dad that, that day, which was great. And my dad ended up later on telling me that I shouldn't have done that. And um, that's why I hate tomatoes and I can't eat them. And if I ever eat them, I think of that day, it, it like fl I, flashes me back into it like the matrix. But anyways, I'm done for now. Stay tuned for Alan Walker delivered to you now. I got Grubhub jokes. All right. Love you, bye. Hi everyone, I'm Alan Walker and I'm very excited to be invited by Grubhub for this soundbite session. So please do enjoy. Thank you.
I'm just trying to decide If I should tell you you're beautiful I'm just breaking the ice If we could go anywhere, where would you want? You and me, baby, or we could get lost It's obvious, you're dangerous One or two I don't know where we'll go But I know we're heading for trouble And if you're sipping one or two That's sad tonight could go Fuck gravity, we're up like two Oh, 
Vamos pa' la playa, pa' curarte el alma Cierra la pantalla, abre la medalla Todo el mar Caribe, viendo tu cintura Tú le coquetea, tú eres buscabulla y me gusta Lento y contento, cara al viento Lento y contento, cara al viento Every time yeah. you come around, yeah, you ease my mind, you make everything feel fine. Worry about those comments, I'm way too numb, yeah, it's way too dumb, yeah. I get those goosebumps every time, I need the Heimlich, throw that to the side, yeah. I get those goosebumps every time, yeah, when you're not around, when you throw that to the side, yeah. I get those goosebumps every time, yeah, 713, through the 281, yeah, I'm riding, why they on me, why they on me, I'm flying, sipping low-key, I'm sipping low-key and Onyx, find a rider. I get those goosebumps every time, yeah, you come around, yeah, you ease my mind, you make everything feel fine, worry about those times, I'm way too numb, yeah, it's way too dumb, yeah. I get those goosebumps every time I need the Heimlich Throw that to the side, yo. I get those goosebumps every time, yeah When you're not around When you throw that to the side, yo. I get those goosebumps every time
But it's alright You're like heaven when I'm in hell
We were young, posters on the wall, praying we're the ones that the teacher wouldn't call. We would stare at each other, cause we were always in trouble. And all the cool kids did their own thing. I was on the outside, always looking in. Yeah, I was there, but I wasn't. They never really cared if I wasn't. We all need that someone.
say thank you so much to Rob Hub for inviting me tonight. Please stay tuned for a Q&A after this performance.
Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Alan Paul Walker. I'm really, really happy to be here with you guys today. And let me see, are we up and running? I believe so. But yeah, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you all for tuning in and huge thanks for Grubhub for putting all of this together. So now the Q&A. Uh, if you want to ask me anything, just put them in the comments on the chat and uh, I will try and uh, answer a few before uh, I'll get moving on. So, all right, let me see. So was that the question, would you do a song with a tired reshoot in Hong Kong? Well, uh, actually like, I would really like to go back to Hong Kong and reshoot the music video because Hong Kong is magical. Another place I would also love to go to is Singapore and use like their amazing architecture to kind of like film a, um, a music video. And uh, I think Rachel Rosenberg uh, is asking if my music is influenced by my hometown. And I would pretty much say yes, because in my hometown, it's fairly known to be the city of rain because it's like raining all the time. And uh, I live in Bergen, Norway. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so you just, like when it's constantly dark outside, raining all the time, then you end up spending a lot more time just being inside and that's eventually what led to me being more interested and more caught up with, for example, uh, music production. And Shepard, actually, I, I, music, what is the number one 
tip for new music producers. Great stuff. Thank you so much that I liked it. And uh, the tip I would like to say is never ever give up uh, on your journey, uh, no matter how long time it will take, because it's going to be quite a wild one. But at the same time, you constantly learn and you develop as an artist at the same time as yeah, like you get to know more people in the community and you, at the same time, you're like you're building a fan base. And like, I've been so close to quitting myself uh, throughout the years until I produced Fade, uh, which uh, I love like flipping my entire world uh, on uh, like upside down. And uh, it made me be able to have the possibility to focus on music on a full-time schedule. Uh, Megan, I'll ask how's the... Um, pandemic been for me and to be fair it's been quite different and it's also been good it's, uh, it's been very interesting to go from traveling non-stop to <laughs> never really traveling at all and uh, like my lifestyle for the past five years has been almost non-stop traveling like 100 to 200 uh, travel days a year and 100 concerts every year and uh, this suddenly going from all that to a sudden stop has been Pretty interesting, but it's been giving me the opportunity to, uh, well, look at things the other other way around. Uh, Consider like touring and fa friends, family, and everyone around me, and uh, it's kind of getting kind of given a very nice perspective on everything. And I've been really happy that this happened, like because uh, it was like a break you didn't really need, but you actually needed. If it makes sense. So. so. Let's see, uh, Nansen Noyan asked, what was your favorite live performance? I would say probably somewhere in Mexico. Uh, I love playing in Mexico. Like the, the crowds are like always like so wild. And uh, I also love playing in Norway, down in China and all around America. Like there's so many places I like to, uh, like playing. I just like love the experience and uh, the audiences tend to uh, yeah, play along really well. So it's, it's really fun. How old were I when Fader blew up and what was that like asked by Nash Meldrum? I was, I think when I first put out Fade, I was 17 or 16. And uh, and then around when I was 18, then we put out Faded. And uh, since then, like, it's been crazy. Uh, but I don't really think about, like, the success about it or anything because I would rather keep my feet on the ground. But it's been quite a journey. And... Uh, that's all thanks to you guys that's watching and all the other ones that's been listening. Uh, Toxic Rollo asked, Alan, who inspired you to make music? Uh, well, in the very beginning, I was influenced by a producer known as DJ Ness. And he was like a very like underground, hands up techno music producer. And uh, it, it kind of like well, was the main inspiration for my melodies and everything because I was just purely interested in learning how on earth he created those tunes. So I asked him and uh, and uh, like, how did you make your music? And then he gave me a bunch of tips. He told me to like stick to YouTube tutorials. He also came with like influence or tips on, for example, how to, uh, yeah, for example, mix, master or uh, yeah, a bunch of other things and how to improve uh, generally as an artist. And that's mainly just thanks to him, thanks to him to, for like even like making me interested in that entire subject. Uh, and let's see. Do we have any other questions? Uh, play, draw, create, repeat. Uh, what do you like to do uh, other than music? Well, I love gaming. Uh, gaming has been a huge part of my life growing up, and I like how I can, for example combine the music universe and the gaming universe and in a way connect uh, them and uh, it's it's really fun and i really enjoy it and uh, another thing i really like to do is go-karting that's like a hobby that i picked up uh, during the pandemic uh, before like the go-karting place shut down uh, but that's like uh, another like fun fact Mr. A asked, um, are you coming to Pakistan uh, after COVID or the pandemic? Uh, to be fair, I would love to. I, I love traveling and seeing the world. So if I ever come to Pakistan, I I highly hope so, like that I would have the chance because I would, I would love to see Pakistan and uh, like the other countries around in that region. 
Uh, uh, let's see. Lars uh, is asking, are you planning on doing more science uh, uh, related to climate change? Uh, well, regarding different world, that was like uh, a very interesting topic. And it was really hard to kind of like write a song specifically about climate change. Uh, with Sophia Carson and Katrin on a course that we actually managed to put together a great production and uh, it turned out really cool like uh, Sophia Carson did a great job singing the song and the, the lyrics had a deep and uh, meaningful impact and uh, yeah lyrics let's see uh, oh the chat is moving all over let's see if we can, I can pick up a comment here uh, Frody Music, what song have you made is the best? Uh, if I were to pick my own favorite song, I would probably say the first initial song that led to my breakthrough, which is Fade. And uh, mainly the reason for that is because that was like the beginning of the entire journey. And it's kind of like, it's like my standpoint and definition of uh, uh, my music today. And I wouldn't have been anywhere without it. Uh, let's see. I saw someone asking, I kind of didn't quite see the name, but I saw someone asking, uh, ask Peanut. Peanut is doing great right now as I'm not home. Uh, I, I'm, uh, well, Peanut is uh, at my sister's place and uh, being well taken care of. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see him soon. <laughs> David uh, asked, can you do a face reveal? <laughs> uh, no, I can't. <laughs> Uh, I'm gaming. What was your most memorable performance? I don't really know which it was specifically, but like things that I find really memorable is when the audience sings louder than the music that's playing out from the speakers itself. And that usually happens like, uh, when I'm performing, for example, Mexico, India, or anywhere else in the world, like it's it's amazing to hear like people sing and express the song so loudly and proudly. Uh, let's see, can we find one question here? Should be asked. Uh, Anna, do you like BTS? Uh, Yes, I do like BTS, and uh, uh, I actually wish uh, if I like or hope that I could one day collaborate with them. Uh, I saw someone asking, "Are you planning on a vocal version uh, of Force?" And uh, I would say yes. I will. That's been like uh, on my mind since uh, since we first did the vocal version of Fade to Faded, and then Spectre to the Spectre. So I would love to kind of like just redo that song and turn it into a, a vocal version but for the time being i don't have like a specific date or like my, any progress on that song for the time being i really good for this i was really make a song with lucas graham and uh, if i had the opportunity i would definitely like to do that and energy asks, what games do you like to play lately i've been playing a lot of old school runescape it's been like the game that i've been like that i grew up with uh, I find it really, really uh, entertaining. Or like, I especially liked to play it uh, when I was on tour because it was such a like nice game to just play when you had like five hours uh, connecting, right or whatever, uh, somewhere in the world. And uh, other than that, I play a lot of Warzone and the multiplayer, like uh, for Modern Warfare. <sighs> when we really release time old version. Oh, that's a tough one. I would really like to release that one. I love playing that one live, and I really wish that I would have the opportunity to release that song. And uh, yeah, it's still like an internal discussion, and uh, I hope I uh, yeah, will get to release that version at some point. <clears throat> uh, if, I was, if I would uh, come back to Sri Lanka, and uh, the answer is yes. like. Uh, when the pandemic comes to an end and uh, traveling opens up again, then I would definitely like to come to Sri Lanka again because last time uh, it was incredible. I don't think I've ever received any more warm welcome than what I got when I came to Sri Lanka last time. It was really a really, really fun experience. 
Well, guys, um, I think I'm gonna do one last question and then, yeah, I'm gonna have, we'll wrap it up. So let's see, can I find a interesting question here? Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Have I been to Denmark? Yes, I have. Uh, let's see. Uh, a call up with Anna Marie. Yes, I would love to do that too. Like, uh, I, I actually did reach out to her and asked if she wanted to do a song together. But um, yeah, that's uh, something I hope could happen at some point. Uh, how do you? Okay, I would, this would be my final question for the the night. Uh, Laurel is asking, how do you get pumped up before your shows? To be fair, like many times, I'm really, really relaxed before I go on stage. Uh, and usually, the only thing I do before I go on stage is literally just drink a Red Bull, and and then I'm fine. Then I'll just go there and perform for two hours. Uh, and when I'm wearing a mask and the hoodie, then like kind of like removes the ability to just like turn away, turn around, and then uh, have a sip of water or even eat. So, uh, so uh, just doing as much as I can before the show and maybe just start to uh, get move ready, like move your body a little bit and uh, get a little pumped up. But I don't know, like I'm very, very chill and I don't know where that some like boost of energy comes, but it usually comes when I see a great crowd reaction and I can see that the crowd is enjoying it. And that's kind of like also uh, in, yeah, contributing to my, uh, I would say, uh, energy on stage. So cool, guys. Thank you so much. It was an honor to uh, tune in. Thank you so much, Grubhub. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, I will see you guys sometime uh, around when this pandemic comes to an end. So, my name is Alan Walker. Peace out. Have a fantastic night and I'll see you soon.